Remote desktop connections are nowadays quite a standard. Many people use them, but not everybody knows that by improper configuration you can be hacked by a RDP server or your data can be compromised. This problem involves almost everybody. Regular employees working remotely from their private computers, which allows the server administrator to access all of their private data and control their computer remotely. It also involves suppliers, which are connecting to their customers to provide them some service, which allows the customer to hack his supplier and gain some more information, maybe about their competitors. Or it allows us to hack an hacker, which connects to an RDP server with a goal to encrypt all the files, but actually he will be the one who will be hacked. Because I love to demonstrate the stuff on stories, so I have a story for you today also. So. Let's imagine we have a network administrator. Let's call him Robert. Robert is in charge of the company's IT, but he is obsessed with his colleague Natalie. He knows that Natalie works time to time from home because she is so busy. So Robert got this idea of hacking her private computer to find some more information about her. So let's look how Robert is going to do this. He connects to the company server, which is Windows Server 2019. It's fully patched and it contains antivirus asset which is in default configuration. Robert creates a folder on a disk which he uses to store the data. The name of the folder is picked so the folder is not suspicious. He assigns the permissions for the folder so everybody can write into it. And also he hides the folder so it's not visible to normal users. Robert is going to place three files into that folder, which he prepared before. The first file is a backdoor, it will be dropped into the Natalie's private computer and it will allow him to connect to her computer anytime. The second one is a PowerShell script which does the magic and also a PowerShell script which dumps Skype database, it will be used later on. Right now we are looking into the PowerShell script which does the magic. The first part downloads private Skype conversations from her private computer and the second part will implant a backdoor into her private computer so Robert can connect anytime. When the files are on their place, Robert has to make them execute when Natalie logs on. For that he uses Task Scheduler and creates a scheduled task which will be run under Natalie's logon session. and it will be run just when Natalie logs in to the server. To run a script without showing any window, Robert uses some common technique, which will run the PowerShell script without user noticing it. The nice stuff about Task Scheduler is that Robert doesn't need to sit in front of the server for three days waiting for Natalie to log in. He can just go home, have a dinner, watch a TV and next day when he returns he can see if uh, the task has been run and the Natalie has been hacked. So right now Robert has everything prepared and he just needs to wait for Natalie to log in. So let's move on to Natalie's private computer. She is operating system Windows 10 in the latest threshold, which is 1903. It's fully patched. It has antivirus installed in default configuration. It has firewall on. She is just an user. She doesn't use administrator privileges. But nothing from these good practices is going to save her from Robert's attack. Just out of the records, let's check that there is no program listed in a startup folder of her profile. Ok, so now it's time for Natalie to start her work. So she connects our remote desktop to the company server. She logs in. And even she is connected just for a couple of seconds. Her computer is already hacked and all of her private Skype conversations from personal computer are already stored on company server. So Robert can access them. And you can see that no suspicious window was shown to her. So right now when she goes back to her 
private computer and she opens the startup folder you can see that there is a program stored which wasn't there before that's the back door I spoke about before but now let's move back on the company's server we can see that in the folder there is a new file that's the file which stores all the Skype conversations, calls and contacts Robert is going to use a PowerShell script which he made before to dump the data so he runs the script with that provided database file and you can see that there are some contacts which Natalie has in their contact list and also some Skype conversations she had before the same way Robert downloaded that Skype conversation he could just download some Excel sheets, stored private pictures or stored passwords from her computer. But that's not all what Robert did. He also placed a backdoor into her computer, I've told you about before, and he's able to connect to her computer anytime. So just for a demonstration, let Natalie log into her computer again. And even she doesn't do anything on her computer, we already can see that on attacker screen, which is in the right upper corner, there is a new session, open it, and it's a session from Natalie's computer. Like this, we can control her computer, list directories, download files, upload files, run programs, change configuration, or just block the computer or encrypt all of her data. I hope you have enjoyed the demonstration. If you liked it, just go to my blog. There are multiple demos like this and subscribe to new articles which I am going to publish.